Thank you for joining me today. My name is Mary Higgins and I'm a Girl Experience Facilitator here at Girl Scouts of Central California South. Today we'll have a short and snappy video on how to identify poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac. When you're out hiking with your Girl Scout friends, make sure and follow our standard safety precautions of wearing closed-toed shoes and it's also a good idea to wear long pants if you think you're going to be in an area that has either poison ivy, poison oak, or poison sumac. It's very important when you go out into the outdoors to be aware of your surroundings and to know what plants are around you. About 85% of all people are allergic to the chemical uracil, which is naturally in these three plants. Now, if you touch um, the uracil in any of these plants, your skin will get red and itchy and swollen, and sometimes it may take like a whole day to even show up on your skin. But um, each one of these plants has the same uh, oily chemical that causes this rash. Sometimes if you're out hiking and there's a forest fire nearby, even just the smoke from these plants burning can give you a rash on your skin or if you inhale too much of the smoke it can make you sick inside too. So you'll definitely want to go to a doctor and be checked out if your rash ever causes you um, a difficult time to breathe or it covers a lot of your body, is near your eyes or private parts. In order to identify these plants, first you need to know what they look like, and next you need to know where they grow. The first plant we're going to look at today is the poison ivy plant. There's an old adage that says, leaves of three, let them be, and that works very well for this plant, as you will always find the poison ivy has um, leaves of three coming out of the same point in the stem. Poison ivy grows over the most of the United States, except for Alaska and Hawaii has no poison ivy. Now, each stem grows into three leaflets that might help you notice it in the woods. In the east, midwest, and south, it grows in the, as a vine, and in the north and west, it grows as a shrub. The next plant we're going to look at is poison oak. It looks a lot like poison ivy, but its leaves are more similar to those of an oak tree. The sun-facing side of the leaf has tiny hairs on it and is a darker shade of green than the ground-facing side. Though it grows all over the country, it is more common in the west. It could be hours or days before your skin reacts to the plant's sap, and your rash may even turn bumpy and form blisters that ooze. You can see that uh, in the spring, they come out sort of red leaves, and even you can get exposed to poison oak when it has no leaves at all, and you'll notice red stems. If you see red stems, that's still poison oak, and you can still get a rash by touching them. Now, poison oak can grow in many different forms. Sometimes it can look like a tall shrub, like even 12 feet tall. Sometimes it can look like a vine climbing up a tree or spreading across the ground. And the last plant we're going to cover today is poison sumac. This woody shrub grows in wet, swampy areas all over the United States. Each stem has 7 to 13 leaves and a cluster of berries that droop down low. A closer look at the leaves will show that they are smooth and not sawtoothed or have little zigzags on the sides. And also the stems are red. If you ever think you have been exposed to any of these plants, it's very important to wash your hands with an oil removing soap as soon as possible to prevent the spread of this to other parts of your body. And make sure and clean underneath your fingernails as that's a place where the oil can hide. The next plant I want to share with you is jewelweed. Mother Nature sometimes provides a remedy for plants that grow right next to each other. 
This plant can often be found in the same environment as poison ivy, poison oak, or poison sumac, and the Native Americans would use this as a remedy for the rashes. Cool showers and calamine lotion might help to relieve the itch for all three of these plants, but mostly you just wait. A week or two should bring relief. Again, see your doctor if your rash is on your face or in your private parts. If it covers more than 25% of your body, if you notice pus from the rash, or you breathe in smoke from the burning leaves, you'll definitely want to seek medical treatment when you're out hiking, especially if you take your four-legged friends with you. Usually dogs do not get a poison oak rash or poison ivy or poison sumac because of the hair in their coats and their skin surface is usually covered by that fur so their skin usually doesn't come in contact with urethral. But the oil can stay on their fur and when you go to pet them you can get the oil on your skin from your animal. So if you know that your dog has gone on a hike with you and scrambled through some poison ivy or poison oak shrubs, you want to make sure and wear gloves and give your dog a bath before he goes and hangs out with you on the couch because you don't want to get a rash from the oil on your dog's fur. So now that you've learned to identify three different plants, poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac, you are ready to go in the outdoors and be able to observe which plants are around you and how to stay safe. Remember leave no trace principles state when you're out in the outdoors, take pictures, take memories, but leave the objects behind. If you are ever in doubt of whether a plant is poisonous or would cause a rash, just do the smart thing and stay away from it. Thank you for joining us today at Girl Scouts of Central California South for this short and snappy video on how to identify poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac.